today I got a package from Longbrick. In this package are not only a bunch of items that will be restocked, but also a lot of new products that will be up on my website, which will be linked below. The products will go live on Saturday, May 11th at 12 p.m. EST, and the stock will be limited, so it will be first come, first serve. Also, be sure to stick around for the detailed review to help you decide on what you would like to get. Some of these items are really well made. For some context, Longbrick was formed by one of the former designers at Forgebrick. Basically, Forgebrick had two main designers, and they decided to split up and work independently, so now we have Forgebrick and Longbrick. Now, what does this mean for us consumers? Well, now instead of just one amazing custom medieval accessory company, we have two. Now, both of the companies still provide their original forge brick items since they both work together to design them. They just also provide their separate exclusive products alongside the older stuff. But enough rambling, let's get into the unboxing. All right, so let's go ahead and open this up. Hopefully I didn't damage anything inside. So this package is roughly twice the size of my last one, so there's going to be plenty of stock on the store for you guys, so let's see what we got here. Alright, box is empty. Let's open this up. Wow, lots of stuff. Holy. Damn, these look amazing. These, which look super cool. By the way, these are some of my mini figures here with some of the older forge brick gear. So you can see how, just how much uh, sort of lighter this paint is than the one here. So they're using a lighter paint. Rather, I asked them to use a lighter paint on these one because I think it just looks much better. First up, we have the nasal helmet. We've seen this one before, but it is now dual painted with the nasal helmet itself in that amazing silver color and the chainmail section in a slightly darker paint. I absolutely love this style of nasal helmet. It's simplistic compared to the other versions. It's just smooth on top and you got that male coif section towards the bottom. Just something about it makes it so aesthetically pleasing to me. Here's a quick comparison between the older, darker nasal helmet and the newer one. I'd say the lighter one is more realistic and fits better with most minifigs. Let's see what else we got here. We got these types of nasal helmets. This is the other nasal helmet variant. You can see that the only difference is the nasal helmet itself, and of course, this one is dual colored as well. I like giving these helmets to my Crusader minifigs because they are seen in the movie Kingdom of Heaven, and I often like to recreate that look. And here is a comparison between the older darker colored version of the helmet. I gotta say with this specific figure, the lighter one works better just because of the lighter chainmail print on the torso. We've got chainmail which are actually in the darker color, which look pretty awesome. A bunch of those. Here we have the chainmail coif and I gotta say I've been getting a lot of requests for this specific item to be put on the store, so it's finally here guys. If you watched my last video, you know that I love the chainmail coif, it's really good to have if you want to have your knights take off their helmets and sort of have this underneath. Here's how it looks like on a minifig, it gives them that amazing look. And then here we got some kettle helms, a lot of kettle helms here too actually. These ones are actually the style that I haven't gotten before. The only kettle helm version we got before was this one right here. And this one's a little different here. Let me take one out actually, show you guys. So this style of kettle helmet looks great. It's dual painted as well, just like the nasal helmets we looked at earlier. It's got a nice shape to it. I really like how these kettle helmets sit at a bit of an angle. You can see what I'm really talking about when I spin it around. And here's a quick comparison of all three kettle helm types. Here we have more kettle helms. And these are actually the same versions as these, but they are in that lighter color. And they actually, this time it, it looks like they used a different colored resin. Before it was, it was gray, as you can see. This is from the older one, so it's got like gray at the bottom there that they left unpainted, and here it's sort of orangey, so. Just something to keep in mind. And this is the same kettle helmet that I have reviewed before, just in that different dual color. So I won't go into too much detail here. I have to say, I still prefer this version over the other two kettle helmet types. An interesting fact that I learned is that archers would usually not wear nasal helmets because the nose guard would restrict their vision. So they would usually opt for either a kettle helmet like this one, or a simple bassinet, or anything that doesn't restrict their vision that much. 
Yeah, moving on here, we got another kettle helmet type. So this one, it's riveted. Again, it comes in that lighter color, which I think is more accurate, to be honest. And then the chain mail there at the bottom, pretty cool. This kettle helm variant is also historically accurate. It looks good from all sides. Comparing it to the other version, you can see that there are little points going around the helmet, and it actually doesn't angle down along the sides as much when compared to the other version. It's always great having a variety of these kettle and nasal helmets, because most of the time, soldiers would buy their own gear to wear into battle, so there would oftentimes be a variety of different helmets on the battlefield, based on which helmets they chose to get from their local blacksmiths. Next up we have the salad. That's right, I'm restocking these as well. It is exactly the same, but they seem to have fixed the plume hole in the back, making it less tight so the plumes fit better. It looks like they also made the visor more sturdy, it definitely feels better than the older version. Speaking of which, here is the previous version of the Salad helmet, which is actually in a slightly lighter, more shinier color. So these newer Salads will come in a dark silver color, and they will also come with a plume of your choice in either red or blue. Here we have... Ooh, these are some of the newer products that they've got. So this is it right here. It's actually the Barbute helmet. And now these are the ones that have the magnets. I like that they tried this out with the magnet. It's just I, I wish it was a little more stronger. That would be just perfect. I mean, this one's pretty good. It's not falling off or anything. Here we move on to Long Brick's exclusive items. So we have the Barbute helmet here, which looks incredible from all sides. I think it definitely does justice to the actual helmet. This has elements painted in gold, you can see that sort of outlining the entire helmet, indicating that this helmet would have been worn by a rich knight or nobleman who could afford such a helmet. The visor is actually magnetic, so there are a couple of magnets on the helmet itself, and then a couple more on the visor. I definitely had a lot of fun bringing the visor up close and then letting go and watching it snap into place. The visor has a cross on the right side, which is the breathing hole, very elegant looking. The visor lifts up just like so, and I gotta say the magnetized visor is ingenious. I just love how it works. You can even bring the visor all the way back if you really wanted to. The only thing stopping this from being the perfect helmet is that the magnet attachment isn't the strongest. I could definitely see it falling off frequently if you like to play with your minifigs. You could also take off the visor entirely, and since those little magnets close the hole that the visor is supposed to attach to, it still looks great that way. Here we have the darker version of the helmet, which is in dark silver. I know it looks black on camera, but it really isn't. Now Longbrick considers the lighter dual painted helmets with the gold elements the premium versions, while the single colored helmets are the regular ones. This is because it takes more effort to hand paint the gold elements, but this is again the same helmet, it just doesn't have that gold outline around it. I only got one of each helmet in this dark silver, so I won't be selling them for now. I only got them so you guys get a better idea of the different colored options. Here we have another variant of the Barbute helmet, it is painted in that dark silver color. Now I only got a couple of these, so these won't be up on the store. Of course the visor functions well, it's using the traditional visor attachment. You can also take it off completely and have this be a helmet of its own if you'd like. The visor itself is awesome, I like the cross breathing hole there. I just think this helmet is a little oversized and bulky in my personal opinion. And next up we got... Ooh, these ones are the clap visor helmets. This is what, what I've been really excited about. Get one out. Wow. So these ones are actually functional. So let me open this right here. Stick it on a minifig. Goes on just like that. And wow, I think they nailed it super well right there. I love how it's not too big. It really captures the helmet well there and then the visor actually does open up to reveal the face there. That's pretty cool. Next up we have the clap visor helmet. This one in particular has an aventail attached onto the helmet. The clap visor itself is a complicated helmet to recreate in LEGO. I've seen the clap visors where the front visor piece extends onto the torso, like the one from the Little Brick Armory but I think this actually works better in terms of proportions. And I guess just because the clap visor itself is smaller and doesn't come down to the neck, Long Brick decided to attach this Aventail to cover that up. I think it just looks amazing, even on an armor stand if you'd want to have this helmet in an armory. I like how it also has that black leather strap going around the edge of the helmet, which is actually how the Aventail attaches onto the helmet itself. The visor does retract upwards, which is historically accurate. Now the breathing holes as well as the eye slits are painted black to give the illusion of depth, 
they are not actually functionable. Some things that I think could be improved would be to tighten the visor attachment. It feels like it should be a little more secure. It's a little too loose here. Also, those gaps on the sides are a little too apparent and it would, would have been nice for the chainmail to come up and over and cover those gaps just a little bit there or have the visor come closer to the minifix face. Also, since the Aventail is attached onto the helmet, it makes it impossible for the minifig to turn its head, which is understandable. You do have to make some sacrifices to get that look. Other than that, it's an awesome looking helmet and great to have in any collection. And here is the full dark silver version of the helmet, just for reference. You can see that the eye slits in particular don't seem to have as much depth as the lighter one, which has them painted. And then here we have, oh, these are the Crusader helmets. Let's see how that looks. Let's give it to this guy. See how it fits like so. Again, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to put like one of the one of those chainmail heads at the back there just to make it fit. Definitely pretty fancy there. Next up we have this Crusader style helmet, and I have to say it looks awesome and will look great on some of my Crusader minifigs. One thing you will notice is that the back is exposed, so you'd best wear this helmet on a minifig head which has the male coif printed on the head itself. Now this helmet also has the painted golden elements which I think looks super cool, almost giving the helmet a divine look. One thing that really surprised me with this helmet is the fact that the top of the helmet has this sort of hammered look, which I think looks so realistic, like a blacksmith has actually been hammering the helmet to get that shape. I really wish some of the other helmets had this effect because, well, they didn't have factories back then that would have produced perfect shapes for every helmet. Everything would have been man-made with slight variations and imperfections between the same versions of helmets. On top of that, this helmet may have been dented and repaired many times, which would also give it that look. Upon closer inspection of my package, I have five of these helmets which have this hammered effect and five which are smooth, so I will make sure to make that distinction on the website so you guys know exactly what you're getting. That way, if you prefer the smooth look, you still have that option. Here is the dark silver version of the Crusader helmet, which looks great as well. One thing to note is that it was not uncommon for Crusaders to paint this helmet, so it wouldn't be entirely unrealistic if this helmet would have a different colored visor element. And these are more great helms. Check this one out. So this is a new great helmet type. You can see that fits pretty well. It looks pretty cool as well. He's got that dual sort of gold going around and all the golden sort of points, which is pretty cool, I think. Next up, we have this great helm right here, which again has some golden elements which are painted onto the helmet. I have to say that the painting on these dual colored helmets is really good, and you have to remember that these gold elements were hand painted, so it must have been a very time consuming process going through like 30 of these. So huge respect to Long Brick for putting in the extra effort. The breathing holes there actually go through the helmet, which is awesome, and the overall design of the helmet is great. No pun intended. Now onto the single colored dark silver version. This one looks awesome too. We've gotten many great helm variants in the past. I think this one is definitely up there with the one we reviewed previously from Forge Brick from my last video. These are more of the Armit helmets right here. It's actually in a box, which is pretty cool. There it is. You can see the even the, the little holes there are painted black just to give the illusion that there is actually a hole there. So those are the visors. These are the helmets. There we go. And see it goes up and down. Yeah, pretty unique. I, I don't think I've ever seen um, an Armet helmet represented this well. Here we have a pretty special one. It is the Armet and again, one of those helmets which have the golden painted elements. Also, the eye slits and the breathing holes are painted black to give it more depth. The visor is removable. This one uses the standard visor rather than the magnets. But overall, an awesome looking helmet. The proportions are great. The only thing I can say that maybe the visor itself is a little too big, but that's me really nitpicking. And here's the dark silver variant of the Armet. This one looks great as well, though it's missing some of the depth from the unpainted breathing holes. Oh, these are actually helmets that we didn't look at up close, so... These are sort of the full chainmail along with that. These are these are kind of like the Viking helmets. And I think it would fit on this guy. Let's put it on. And last but not least, we have this Viking helmet, which looks absolutely amazing. 
You can see that it has this little visor eye slit section and the rest of it is chainmail, which comes down and then out a little, which I have to say I love the shaping of it. This helmet in particular fits so well with this Gambeson body print. I love how shiny the print on the mail is there and it looks like it perfectly transitions into the helmet. With this helmet in particular, I had a small issue where the minifig's eyes didn't line up with the eye slits, but after taking the helmet on and off and sort of loosening it up a little bit, it seemed to work out quite well. The detail on the chainmail there is pretty incredible too, and you can see that it is also darker than the actual helmet itself, so this is also a dual colored helmet. And here I got one of those same helmets, but this time without the mail coif. I only got one of them because I think you guys would like the ones with the chainmail a lot more. The thing with this helmet is that the eye slit area sticks out a little too far from the minifix face, which wasn't a problem on the version with the chainmail. Those were all of the products, now let's play around with some of the gear and see what kind of minifix we can make. First up I got this Knight of Jerusalem here, he's got that Crusader helmet that we looked at earlier combined with a male coif printed head, he's also got alliance with the flag of Jerusalem, he also has a white cape and a kite shield. I have to say, I think this figure looks absolutely amazing, and here's the image that inspired me to go for this look. The next figure I made was this Templar Knight, he's got that amazing grey helm on, and the red cross on his shield and torso, pretty cool looking figure overall. Here I got a noble lord from the Holy Roman Empire, and I decided to give him an armet just because the gold elements really make it look like a high-end piece of armor. I also like how the armet helmet comes down right to the chest plate there, leaving practically no gap in between. You can see I also gave him some spurs, a big golden shield, and some golden body armor. I'm overall happy with how this figure turned out. And last but not least, we have this warrior right here who is inspired by the Hungarian Cumans. You know, he's got that closed chainmail helmet, a gambeson body, and a green shield with a two-handed axe. I would have liked to put the shield on his back, but I haven't really found a good way to do so without making it look oversized. Now let's make a little battle scene between the Knights of the Holy Roman Empire and the Hungarian Cumans. First up we got their leader, who is a rich nobleman and lord. He decided to take a small garrison to help clear out a nearby Cuban encampment that has been causing trouble recently. Here he has a couple of his most trusted bodyguards, one equipped with a salad and one equipped with a barbute helmet. They'll make sure to protect the lord at all costs. We also have a couple skilled knights equipped with a clap visor helmet, and of course we've got some foot soldiers, two of which are equipped with pole arms. They are led by their captain, marked with an orange garment around his neck. And here we have another nobleman who decided to join in for the glory. He's got his trusted horse and an awesome looking barbute helmet plated with gold. Now for the Cuman bandit side, we have three Cuman warlords, one of their most experienced units. They are all equipped with two-handed axes. They also have green capes and I have to say they look pretty menacing. We have a couple archers who have those pointy kettle helmets and of course some men at arms with both the nasal and kettle helmets, most of which are armed with those round shields. Now let's set up the battlefield. Alright guys, I have to say, after I made the Forge Brick unboxing video a few months ago, I was blown away and right now having these accessories from Long Brick, they have impressed me yet again. I'm glad I'm able to provide you guys with some of the best medieval accessories on the market right now. I know lots of people have been messaging me about restocks and you guys have waited long enough, it's finally here. I've restocked the most requested items, most of which are now dual painted to capture that extra bit of realism. I've also introduced some new accessories which I know you guys will love, they look absolutely amazing and unique, especially that magnetic barbute helmet. Now remember that the items will go live on the website on Saturday the 11th of May at 12pm Eastern Standard Time or at noon. I'd recommend setting a reminder so that you are able to get your hands on your desired items because last time we sold out pretty fast. I would like to also give a shout out and special thanks to Blake from Longbrick for supplying these accessories. 
As always, if you guys have any special requests, feel free to contact me on Discord or Instagram, which will be linked below, and I'll try my best to assist you. But that's all I've got for today, I truly hope you enjoyed the video, and I'd like to thank you guys again for watching and supporting me for what I do, it really means a lot, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.